Do you know how sometimes circumstances compel a person to commit acts they would never otherwise consider? Stealing money, committing robbery, engaging in violence, or taking actions that shake the very foundation of humanity desperation can drive one to extremes. However, committing a crime under the pretext of compulsion does not justify the act. Causing harm or engaging in unlawful acts should never be an option, as a mistake lasting mere seconds can ruin an entire life. Hello, friends. How are you? Today, we'll discuss the Medarata family case. This story begins in Faridabad, a district in Haryana, situated near Delhi and Uttar Pradesh. It is a well-known area. In Sector 7A of Faridabad, there was a house, Savitri Bhawan, House No. 19. The year was 2019. The house belonged to a family of three, Praveen Medarata, his wife Sudesh Bharati, and their son Darpan Medarata. Occasionally, Praveen's daughter Priyanka and her husband Saurabh Kateriya visited. Praveen, the head of the family, was a radiologist and a faculty member at IIM's All India Institute of Medical Sciences. He also operated a digital X-ray clinic in the basement of his house, equipped with an X-ray machine and all necessary setups. His wife, Sudesh Bharati, was a retired teacher, and their son, Darpan, worked as an engineer in a Gurgram-based company. Their daughter Priyanka had been living in Indirapuram, Ghaziabad, with her husband Saurabh since their marriage in 2013. Priyanka worked at SCL Technologies, while Saurabh was employed at Virtus, a digital engineering firm in Gurgram. The family was well-educated and prosperous, holding respectable jobs or having retired from them. They lived comfortably and shared cordial relationships within the family and with their neighbors, most of the time, only the elderly parents, Praveen and Sudesh, were at home. Darpin rarely visited, and Priyanka and Saurabh's visits were occasional. It was a Saturday, and something unusual had been happening at the Medareta residence since the previous night. Neighbors noticed the main gate and the basement door had been left open, but the ground floor door was shut. Nobody from the family had been seen outside since morning. Priyanka and Sorab, who were visiting, were also nowhere to be seen. The television in the house was blaring at a high volume, audible even outside. Their female dog, Ruby, had been barking incessantly since the night before. As the day progressed, around noon, neighbors grew concerned. Dr. Praveen, who usually opened his clinic daily, had not done so. The morning newspaper was still lying by the door. Praveen was known for his morning walks with Ruby, but that day, he had not stepped out. The maid, who arrived for work, rang the doorbell multiple times but received no response. Frustrated, she left. Neighbors began to feel an eerie emptiness around the house, coupled with unease. One of the neighbors called Dr. Praveen to check on him. The phone rang but went unanswered. This further deepened their concern. They contacted Darpan, who was in Gurugram, explaining the situation. He was puzzled, as he had spoken to his mother the previous night, and everything seemed fine then. Several neighbors decided to investigate. They rang the doorbell and knocked, but received no response. Some noticed red stains resembling footprints outside the main door. Peering through a basement window, they saw a pool of red liquid spread across the floor, possibly blood. Alarmed, they immediately called the police around 2.15 p.m. A police team from Sector 7 arrived promptly. The neighbors narrated the events and showed them the red footprints. The officers knocked and called out, but the loud television muffled any response. Finally, they decided to break in. To their surprise, the door wasn't locked. It opened with a gentle push. As they stepped inside the drawing room, they were horrified. Two bodies, drenched in blood, lay on the floor. The entire room was stained red. The deceased were Priyanka and Sorab. Deep wounds inflicted by a sharp weapon were visible on their necks and bodies. Blood had pooled around them, partially coagulated. The police proceeded to the ground floor bedroom, where they found Sudesh Bharati's body lying near the bed, also covered in blood. Similar deep gashes were evident on her neck and body. Lastly, the officers checked the basement. Near the X-ray machine, they discovered Dr. Praveen's body. He, too, bore multiple stab wounds. Four of the five family members had been brutally murdered. The house was in complete disarray, drenched in blood, a horrifying scene. Forensic teams and sniffer dogs arrived shortly after. 
someone called repeatedly to inform the police. A neighbor shared the house owner's son's number, and the devastating news was relayed to him. Darpan, upon hearing the news, left everything and rushed from Gurgram to Faridabad. When he reached home, seeing the condition of his parents, sister, and brother-in-law left him in shock, and he fainted. Relatives took him to the hospital while close family members at home broke into inconsolable tears. The question arose what could be the motive behind such brutality in the house. Police began their investigation. All four bodies were sent for post-mortem. During the search, the police found no valuables missing from the house. The cupboards and cash were intact. Even the cash in the clinic drawers located in the basement was untouched. From the crime scene, it was evident that the two women of the house, Sudesh mother and Priyanka daughter, had their jewelry missing. This made it clear that the murders were not motivated by theft or robbery. Interestingly, there was no sign of forced entry into the house. The main door was undamaged, indicating a possible friendly entry. This raised suspicions about personal enmity or revenge. Whoever came to the house likely intended to eliminate the family. There were CCTV cameras installed around the house, including one at a neighbor's place that had a clear view of the Rada family's entrance. The police began scrutinizing all the footage. Questions filled everyone's minds. Why was the TV playing at full volume? Why was the dog barking? Why didn't the dog attack the killers? If the intruder was unknown, why was the door open for them? Dr. Praveen's clinic regularly received patients for x-rays and diagnoses. Could someone from among them be involved? Neighbors shared that the family had lived in the locality for over 25-30 years without any fights or disputes. They were well-educated, civil, and kind people. Even Sudesh's friends denied any possibility of enmity or altercations. As one family member, Darpan, was absent during the incident and survived. The police momentarily suspected him. Could he have orchestrated the murders over property matters? Did he hire someone for this crime? Some of Darpan's friends also visited the house after hearing the news. Meanwhile, the police discreetly began investigating Darpan's call records and locations. The crime branch formed five teams and assigned them specific tasks. The room where the TV was on had been locked from outside, and the family's female dog, Ruby, was also locked inside. It seemed the killers confined Ruby before committing the crime to prevent her from attacking. The police reviewed footage starting from the evening the family was last seen alive, as per neighbors, until the next afternoon when the incident came to light. They paid close attention to everyone entering and exiting the house. On November 8th, at 10.10 p.m., a silver-colored scooter was spotted near the house. A man wearing a helmet parked the scooter and waited outside as if expecting someone. He sat on the scooter for about 12-13 minutes. During this time, Dr. Praveen, his wife Sudesh, and their pet dog Ruby returned home, possibly after a dinner or night walk, as confirmed by neighbors. The helmeted man continued waiting. At 10.27 p.m., the man entered the house. Shortly after, the daughter and son-in-law arrived. The man remained inside the house. At 11.52 p.m., he hurriedly exited, still wearing the helmet, and left on his scooter. This made the police suspicious of the man. Further footage from the next day revealed no other significant activity. Four suspects came under scrutiny. Relatives, neighbors, and acquaintances were questioned about them. Darpan, once stable, was also shown the footage. Fortunately, the police identified all four suspects. Messages were sent, asking them to appear at the crime branch office the next day, Sunday. Three suspects cooperated, provided statements, and were found innocent. However, the fourth suspect, Mukesh Thacker, did not show up. Darpan recognized Mukesh from the CCTV footage. Mukesh was a friend of Darpan and the man who had entered the house that night wearing a helmet. Though Darpan was cleared of suspicion after examining his call records and locations, the connection between him and Mukesh brought the investigation back to him. The police start suspecting Darpan. It seems both Darpan and his mother Sudesh may have been killed as part of a conspiracy. Some close people said that Darpan and his mother did not have a good relationship, while others believed that small disputes happen in every family, and it didn't mean that Darpan would kill anyone. When the police interrogated Darpan, he admitted that there were some issues, but he wasn't so angry with his mother that he would kill anyone. On the night of the murder, 
He had even spoken to his mother on the phone and asked about her well-being. His mother had informed him that his sister and brother-in-law would be coming over that night. This cleared Darpan of suspicion. Now, the police focused on finding his friend Mukesh Thakur. Mukesh Thakur lived near Dabu Sabzi Mandi in Faridabad, in Rajiv Colony. He was a gym trainer and worked at a gym called The Den in Huda Market. Mukesh met Darpan there, as Darpan was also a member. The incident happened on the night of Friday, November 8th. On the afternoon of November 9th, the incident became known. Mukesh was present at the crime scene that night. As the police slowly started to question everyone and reviewed the CCTV footage, four suspects emerged. Mukesh was also called in for questioning the next day. On the morning of November 10th, the police interrogated three of the suspects in the crime branch office. However, Mukesh did not show up. Later that evening, a team arrived at Mukesh's home and questioned his mother, brother, and wife. Mukesh's mother revealed that early in the morning, her son had packed some clothes and other things and was leaving. When asked where he was going, he said he was going to Haridwar for a few days with friends. At the same time, the police found a silver scooter at Mukesh's house, the same scooter seen in the CCTV footage. The handles of the scooter had blood stains, and the keys also had blood on them. Although the scooter belonged to Mukesh's brother, it raised suspicion. When the police asked Darpan's friends about their vehicles during the investigation, they were asked if they had motorcycles, scooters, or cars. While most of them mentioned motorcycles or cars, Mukesh never mentioned the scooter. During the interrogation, Mukesh's wife handed the police a note written by Mukesh. According to her, the note had been found on top of the fridge, and it was written in Mukesh's handwriting. The note read, I have killed four people, and I may also commit suicide. The police went to Mukesh's gym, where the gym owner made an unexpected revelation. Normally, Mukesh left the gym at 10 p.m., but on November 8th, he left early at 9 p.m., saying he had to attend a wedding. The next day, he came to the gym at his usual time, but he had a bandage on his hand. When asked about it, Mukesh explained that he had fallen off his scooter when a dog suddenly crossed in front of him. The police were suspicious that Mukesh might have injured himself while attacking someone, and they decided to find him before he could act on his suicidal thoughts. Meanwhile, they were also curious about the note. They began searching for Mukesh, and by a twist of fate, his phone was turned on. Tracing it, they discovered he was in Mumbai. A team was immediately dispatched to Mumbai, and upon arriving there, they found out his location was in Shirdi. By the evening of November 13th, Mukesh was arrested in Shirdi by the Haryana police. He was brought to Delhi and then to Faridabad. Mukesh confessed to the murders and explained his reasons. He revealed that he had developed an addiction to online gambling and betting, which had led him to accumulate a debt of rupee 10 lakh. He had been working as a gym trainer for six years, and his clients trusted him, so he started borrowing money from them with false stories. Once, he borrowed rupee 5 <laughs> from a lady client by telling her that his wife had complications during pregnancy. But he gambled away that money. He continued borrowing from different people, eventually accumulating a debt of rupee 10 lakh. However, his salary as a gym trainer was only rupee 15 zizans in a month, so he couldn't repay the loan. That's when he met Darpan at the gym, who seemed to have a wealthy background. Mukesh thought about robbing Darpan's house to repay his debts. Initially, he had no intention of killing anyone, just stealing money and jewelry. A week before the murder, he bought a knife, as he had been to Darpan's house a couple of times before and knew that Darpan's parents lived there. On the night of November 8th, Mukesh rode his brother's scooter to Darpan's house. The house was locked, so he waited, knowing that Dr. Praveen and his wife would be out for a walk. Once they returned, Mukesh entered the house wearing a helmet and was allowed in by the couple. Mukesh told Dr. Praveen that he had injured his wrist during a workout and needed an x-ray. While Dr. Praveen was setting up the x-ray, Mukesh pulled out the knife and demanded money. When Dr. Praveen screamed for help, Mukesh panicked and attacked him, stabbing him multiple times in the neck, head, and chest. He left Dr. Praveen on the floor and moved upstairs to Sudesh's room. Sudesh was sleeping and Mukesh tried to open her wardrobe. When Sudesh woke up and screamed, Mukesh attacked her with a knife, killing her as well. He then moved to the living room, where Priyanka, Darpan's sister, 
walked in and saw him with bloodstained hands and clothes. She screamed for her husband, but Mukesh attacked Priyanka and killed her too. As Darpan's brother-in-law, Zorab, arrived and tried to stop him, Mukesh attacked him as well, killing him after a brief struggle. Mukesh stole three mobile phones and some jewelry before fleeing on his scooter. According to Mukesh, he had no intention of killing anyone, but when the robbery was interrupted, he killed Dr. Praveen. To cover up that murder, he killed Sudesh. Then, he killed Priyanka and Sorab to eliminate all witnesses. Mukesh stole jewelry worth rupee 10 lakh. The police recovered one of the stolen phones from Priyanka's possession, found in a place called Ajnoda. Mukesh's actions were a tragic result of his gambling addiction and financial desperation, which led to the brutal murders of an entire family. The killer has been caught, and the investigation is ongoing. Let's end the story here. Please comment below and tell us how you found this video. Don't forget to like and share the video, and subscribe to our channel with the bell icon. See you in the next video. Thank you.